are here with Mr. Solomon Shunaya. Wow, you're getting better. Hey, you're sounding tell, good. Tell, tell the people. Tell them. Solomon Shunaya. Shunaya, so all right. Correct. All right, correct. good, nice. <laughs> I tell you, I sound a real practice. I was like, fella, tell me again, tell me again. And he's like, yeah, you get to it. I was like, all right, good, good, good. <laughs> so uh, we are here with Solomon talking, investing in artists. So earlier, I am not the, the formidable Laura Dowrich. I need a prop, right? So I will be asking questions off of my phone. Um, so businesses, states, and even some artists and parents view what they, what we do as creatives as a leisure activity as opposed to a serious business most of the time. So we're going to dive into this session in two parts, um, investing in artists from the angle of private sector, and then we're going to talk about the <coughs> angle of artists investing in themselves, which is something... Those who know me personally know I've been hopping on all the time, right? So in our pre-discussions, um, we started off talking about investing in knowledge. You want to share a little more into that? Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, I'm really happy to be here. And Melissa, thank you for this opportunity. And no this in itself is sort of like the first step in advancing right, a career. Um, and this is part of that knowledge exchange. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to be a part of this. And first of all, or second of all, who are the artists in the building? Show of hands, just to know. Okay. Anybody, management, talent management, producers, <coughs> investors? Invest. Okay, yeah, he's an investor. Okay, that's what's up. So investing in artists, mm -hmm. the first thing that we need to do as artists, right, is invest in ourselves. And yeah. in the music industry, thank you, in the music industry, for some reason, right, um, the practitioners, especially the artists, sometimes um, tend to focus on the art so much, but they don't understand or have a background of what that really entails from the business side. Right, so you'd be very surprised how many artists, producers, even talent managers, don't understand the, the principles of copyright and how at the very heart of the music business, what you're really doing when you create music, you're essentially creating copyrights. And these copyrights are the foundation of your business. This is what gets you um, paid when you register with your PRO. This is what um, will pay your pension because every song that is created can continue making money for the rest of your life and for 50 years after, you know, uh, for, the, for your family, you can leave a legacy. So the first thing is, yes, we can't stress how important it is for music artists to understand the basics of the music business, even if you're going to have a manager, you're probably going to have maybe an agent handle your live show bookings, or you're going to have a music publisher. Mm -hmm. It's still important for you to understand the basics. So that's... 100% okay. very important. And part of those basics definitely is preparing, well, first of all, treating yourself as a business and being able to set up that scheme, right? So talk to them a little more about the technicalities in terms of um, registering legally and having bank accounts and all these different things. Right. I think it was uh, in, the, in the great words of the, of the great Jay-Z, you know, he's a, I'm a business, not a business, you know? Um, <laughs> I'm a business, there you go, <laughs> there, you, there you go. So the bottom line is as an artist, you are a business. And um, of course, beyond that, in order to maximize um, the investment that you put into yourself, in order for anybody to take you seriously, you need to treat yourself like a business. So businesses have to register and incorporate. Right? Um, even if you're a sole trader to a limited liability company, it's important to, before you try and get signed to anybody else, sign yourself to yourself. Right? So I always encourage artists to treat their rollout as a business. So that, that means, what is your business plan? Okay? Um, do you have one? And it doesn't matter if you have a record label. Right? It's good for the record label to know that this artist understands what their plan is, understands their strategy. Mm -hmm. 
understands where their target market is. And of course, in music, there's so many facets. There's so many aspects of the industry. So it goes beyond just yeah. being famous and singing on stage. Mm -hmm. right? You have merchandise. You have a brand you can monetize. You have synchronization, which is very key. All these aspects, you have songwriting, building your catalog. So you need to build a business plan that incorporates all these revenue streams into something cohesive, no matter how simple it is. It's important to have a vision, have a business plan, and then build a team. Everything that a business does in any other field needs to be replicated as an artist. Mm -hmm. There's a very um, popular um, producer and talent manager here who actually had a session with uh, Music Matters Caribbean on their podcast, Mr. Anson Soverall. Mm. And I distinctly remember in that podcast with him, Nigel, and Laura, they were talking about exactly that, the business plan, right? Um, and that for his artists, he makes sure that anybody he's onboarding that is new, he sits down with them and they develop that plan in detail. Mm. And it's not that you're going to stick to that plan for the rest of your life, right? If it's a three-year plan, it's not that it can't tweak. It's a living document, right? So you start somewhere to make sure you have that strategy and business development side going, mm -hmm. and then you make it alive from there, right? So after they have this business plan and they have um, their, their companies registered, their brands registered, um, you have your bank accounts, you're paying your taxes, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, and you're going through all of this. Then we have how do they make themselves a viable product after this? All the planning stages, all the 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 real estate, as you told me in our conversation, the real estate here is already set up. What's next? Um, in business, the foundation of any good business normally is your product. Mm -hmm. So you have to have to invest in ensuring that your product is the best that it can be. And I think a lot of artists don't understand, maybe they don't focus on all the aspects of what that product is. Mm -hmm. So your person, you know, uh, being, the, being the best in terms of, you know, presenting yourself to the, to the public as an artist, mm -hmm. being able to perform live in front of an audience, really zero in on that craft, craftsmanship. So your product is not just your music, it's your stage crafts, right? It's your look, you know, it's, you know, developing some kind of story that you're going to tell and use to sell your music. It's building a brand, mm -hmm. right? So that brand also becomes a living um, part of your business that you could trademark, you could, of course, there are image rights, you can, you can, you can sell that brand. But so product development, I think, is sometimes underestimated. In the record business, of course, product development takes place in the A&R department. Right. So they usually discover talent the old days. You know, they would take that talent, put them in studios, develop a sound, craft a look with the talent, and develop a story. But today, the artist is pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. and, and the artist needs to understand that nobody's going to do it for you. Right, so record labels today, they don't want to sign brand new artists. They want to sign artists that already have some kind of package. So whether you're a talent manager, independent artist, it's, this still applies. Develop your product. Yeah. So I like that you're using business terminology, terminology. Right, right. <laughs> and marrying it with what we know in the music industry, right? Um, somebody, was it Shane, said it earlier about the words being important and understanding your audience and being able to speak to them. So if you're talking about investing in artists and you have to go now as the artist to go and speak to an investor or corporate sponsor or whatnot, you're supposed to be able to, well, not supposed to be able, but you should at least try to talk their language, you know, understand what you're bringing forward and talk the language, correct? Absolutely, look. We've all been to school, at least some level of school, and a lot of times you learn a lot of things in class that you might not necessarily <laughs> want to really learn, like trigonometry yeah. or some yeah. other random thing. But you, but you have to learn that. So as an artist, it makes sense to understand um, sort of like the nomenclature, the music business, the fundamentals, and be able to present literally in front of your potential investor, even if it's family and friends. Uh, people, people will invest 
in mm -hmm. what they believe in, right? So it's one thing to believe in yourself. It's another thing to convince people that you have a good understanding of how this investment is going to turn into right. you know, returns and profit. So what do you have to say to the artists who, who go, woe be to me, I just want to create. I just want to write. I just want to sing. I don't want to deal with all of that. That's too much. Well, look, it's up to you, for sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can perform and build a career that's really limited. What I would just say is you don't want to limit yourself. And I think today um, we live in a world where independent artists or in independence is the name of the game when it comes to music artists, right? Mm -hmm. So the only way, mark my words, the only way to be successful in the future, right, and now, is to understand the business, carry yourself as a business person. That's the only way you can maximize. Um, especially today, there's the threat. I call it a threat, but I think it's an opportunity. Artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that could potentially upend you know, the, the artist's dream. When AI can now create a song, right, mm -hmm. hypothetically. And it's happened. We've seen, you know, mm -hmm. we've seen it. So artists need to really understand what the future of the music industry is. Um, I know this is boring for a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. I just want to, like you said, I want to make songs I want to create. But if you want to survive in the current climate, if you want to thrive, if you want to build a, a life for your family, mm -hmm. the best artists that I've worked with, the most successful artists that I know, and I've collaborated with a lot of international artists, they understand the business, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I can say. So my classic example that I usually give to that whole um, topic of understanding the business, there was, um, there was a, what do you call it, an insurance agency here. They were having this big shebang at Hyatt Hotel. Mm. And of course, they want an artist to perform, right? They contacted the artist directly and they told her, um, you know, we want you to perform for the next three days for our event, so by, so by, so. Of course, they didn't talk cost because the artist quickly said, oh, talk to my manager, right? So, ooh. Of course. Yeah, so she passed them on immediately, talk to my manager. Um, and then the manager took over the conversation. So in that now, the person found, the person who was hiring her found that, you know, the person was a little bit unscrupulous. You know, and like something wasn't too kosher uh, right there. Yeah. So they decided to call back the artist and they're like, do you have any idea how much you're being paid? And let's say the figure was actually 10,000. She told them, you know, well, $2,000 per day. Yeah. And this is $10,000 per day. So. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. she was Furious, so she goes to the manager and she's like, "Well, I was just informed that I was, you know, being paid so and so." And of course, he gave us some sort of BS answer, and and she was mortified. She was like, "No!" So it ended up in a whole court ordeal where you know she had to get back the rest of money from him and all that. But that in itself is a classic, very simple scenario of somebody not minding their business. You know, you, you're, you're not asking the questions that you need to ask. Where is the invoice? Where is the quotation? Where is the this? Where is the that? Make sure you're checking your books and all of that to, you know, mind your business. I mean, look, the stories are plenty. Like, one example that everybody might know and should know is like TLC. That's a very basic example, right? But selling millions of records and ending up with 50K, which for them, I think they made about $150 million for the record label. And they made $50,000, right? So you know, understanding the business, you have artists like, uh, I mean, there's so many examples of artists that understand the business and monetize that you may not even think about. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely, uh, we have a session tomorrow. I'm plugging the session. Yes. It's a uh, music synchronization. And in that session, we're gonna dig deeper into this, uh, all the underlying rights, how to monetize them, and how to get that money. Yep, 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 yep. So switching gears a little bit, Let's look at the investor side of things now. Let's look at the banks, yes. the investors, whether they be angel or otherwise, um, the sponsors itself that you know we frequently go to to ask for money and mm -hmm. stuff to do things. So let's flip the script on that a little bit and talk from their angle. Yeah, look, the first thing that we did was talk about 
artists and to get into these rooms and get investors, sponsors, whether it's the talent managers or the artists themselves, um, yeah, we've covered the part of having knowledge and information. The same thing applies, though, to investors. I think what Music TT is doing is fantastic. Um, you know, in the music industry, like you said in your introduction, a lot of the you know, private public sector, they don't really take it, as, especially in emerging markets, right? They say, yeah, this is great. I'll sponsor a show. I get my brand out there with a nice party. Mm -hmm. I, get to, I get to hang out with Marshall Montano. I get to hang out at a cool event. But the business of it is something that they also sort of struggle to, to grasp, especially mm -hmm. in these markets. So I think it's important as well um, for stakeholders to educate the investors. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, I think it was Shane that mentioned, that kind of gave us an overview about how big this global music industry is. Mm -hmm. It is right now, I think, top three, if not the number one alternative investment. Mm -hmm. right? So the rest of the world gets it. Music rights are like oil. And um, you know, it's like gold, right? Mm -hmm. And I think even Shane said it's like you're mining as opposed to mining for, you know, kind of destroying the earth. This yeah. is like a precious metal. And the, the rights in music are like an asset class. So mm -hmm. for investors, if they understand that, then they will understand that these assets are resilient, right? You hear about people uh, just the other day, um, Nelly, or I think I just heard it today, he sold his catalog, half his catalog for 50 million, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but that pales in comparison. People like Bob Dylan, his estate, I mean, they've, I think they sold for like almost half a billion in dollars. You know? Mm -hmm. These are songs that were recorded 30 years ago, right? So people are making money from music um, at that level with music recorded and written 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's a resilient asset. The investors need to understand this. We need to share information. Mm -hmm. and share these opportunities with the investors. And platforms like this, I think, is a great way to start. Right. So, so what you are talking about there is in terms is leveraging IP, right? So understanding the worth of your IP and leveraging it. Um, for those of you in the room, there is a lawyer here. Her name is Tarita Kalu. When I say here, not here, locally. Um, Tarita Kalu that is actually building out a platform for IP valuation mm -hmm. for artists. And this is her ongoing battle um, and task that she has decided to take up to basically um, confront the banks here because mm -hmm. we have an issue of banks not wanting to um, engage with artists. They'll take your money and say, open the bank account and put it in. But they, you're correct. And they, they don't give loans. They don't give anything. So if you're an artist as a sole trader or LLC, it is hell to try to do anything bank related. So Tarita has actually taken that mantle to try and do that, just throwing that out there in case, you know, for persons that didn't know. I mean, the examples even in Nigeria with what we tried to build, I come from that space, uh, myself, Fela, we've been involved in the industry, you know, for quite a while. And we didn't get a lot of government support in, or private investors. But, you know, um, after a while, the government started supporting and they would set up a fund Mm -hmm. and say, okay, we have a billion dollars. It wasn't a billion, it was like, <laughs> we have a billion dollars for the creative sector. You know, come one, come all, artists, come and get this, come and get this money, we'll right. fund. But the truth is, artists were not able to tap into that, right? Right. Because they didn't have, they didn't understand how to come up with a business plan that works mm -hmm. um, for those investors. Right. So once again, it goes back to you know, the artists and the talent management, you know, the record labels, sort of showing the local market, right, mm -hmm. that this is a business. And not only that, these artists are serious mm -hmm. and they understand their business and they understand how to mitigate those risks. They understand all the things you need to understand to sell to a mm -hmm. bank or investor. So once again, the investors um, and the artists obviously need to somehow <laughs> you know, work together yeah. um, through, of course, sometimes managers and record labels and all the stakeholders to kind of figure this out. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you know, other people have said, there's a, it's for investors out there, the music industry is one of the most reliable, you know, um, mm -hmm. investments one could make. Um, so you have to lean in. So investors need mm -hmm. to lean in to figure out what it really is. 
Well, they need to understand it first and then lean it, in. Yeah. Exactly. But they're not going to lean in without us. We have to kind of pull them in Correct. as well. So that is an ongoing conversation. You, you are doing a great job at, you know, building these bridges. Yeah. I wish there were more investors. Um, I should have raised my hand up because <laughs> we also invest. Yeah. But the reality is we need, to bring, we need to have sessions like this with the investors, right, and present this information to them and gradually start to build that bridge. Right. So, so let's, um, let's move on to export opportunities, mm. right? So that is the big flick here for Trinbagonians in that everybody wants to do something outside, right? But how do they start fostering those collaborations? How do they, you know, get into the rooms to have those conversations? Um, let's talk about that. Just do it. <laughs> I mean, that's a very, 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 very big and you know tough nut to crack. Yeah. But it's very, very doable. I think my my partner and, and colleague fella had mentioned, um, I think in previous sessions, the importance of collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think we, in in Trinidad, we we spoke earlier, right, about the potential with the especially with music production, mm -hmm. right. Um, so collaboration is is broad and vast, right? You have the artists in front, you also have the producers in the back. And I hear that the producers, and I'm learning myself, the producers are kind of a big deal here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it's very important for producers, you know, writers um, as well, and maybe for Trinidad as, as a whole, to look at how we can maximize this opportunity with producers. The world, you have artists like Drake and other artists, Drake is an example, mm -hmm. but the world is looking for vibes, mm -hmm. looking for new sounds and new ideas. And I think Soka has always been there. Um, there's an opportunity for, for, for producers and songwriters to collaborate with producers and songwriters everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's the DMs. So you DM your, your favorite artist, um, and you might be lucky enough that they even replies. But you can also collaborate with smaller artists, mm -hmm. artists on the rise, right? Because those artists on the rise might end up rising, right? Mm -hmm. And you grow together. So when you talk about collabing with other people in other parts of the world, look for artists that may not necessarily be, you know, you don't have to be the biggest artist. Right. But collaborate for producers. The truth is you're building a repertoire, right, which is basically your catalog. So sometimes, you know, collaborating with other producers, um, let's say a producer here collaborates with a couple of producers in, in, in the US or in the UK, the truth is, and continues to do that mm -hmm. on a repeated basis. You know, if you, do, if you do 50 collaborations, maybe one collaboration might end up being placed in a, I don't know, Beyonce single or even a WizKid, mm -hmm. you know, um, single. And there you go. Now you're building your catalog, even if it's with, even if it's as a co-producer mm -hmm. or co-writer. So don't underestimate the importance of mm -hmm. collaborating from the, you know, lead artist side to the production side. I saw a great steel band. Uh, mm -hmm. Steel band. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, artists earlier playing. Let's get more of that, right, in other forms Correct. of music, and, and let's blend it. So even this, as simple as it is, is an export opportunity because we have five persons that are being brought in from Australia, UK. Um, somebody else is going to be talking from Nigeria. We had the Canadian. So, you know, this is why it was important to be in the room here today Absolutely. networking and as always, single him out so he can unblush, but Marcus, brave boy, let's uh, networking boss. You know. <laughs> he is a networking boss. <laughs> and collaborations, is, it's with him. He, he's like, Melly, listen, I can't speak Spanish, but I'm collaborating with the Spanish artists. <laughs> it's, it's no bounds anymore. You don't need but to I saw when he came in the country. I saw him when he came in the room and he's <laughs> dapping everybody. I mean, look, <laughs> at the end of the day, this is still an interpersonal thing. Mm -hmm. um, artists need to get out there. So I know artists want to be in the studio. You want to record. You want to write your nice songs in your room and all that. Um, mm -hmm. You want to be the celebrity. And sometimes you can be in isolated because mm -hmm. that's kind of you're in this creative bubble. But, yeah, you need to get out and be the network boss like my man, you know. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, we, we are on time here, so we're going to give the opportunity and open up the floor to persons for questions for Solomon. 
And in case you didn't read his bio, I will urge you to read his bio. Now, I'm not going to tell you the excitement that lies in that bio. So you all should be jumping up with questions right now. <laughs> oh, the microphone, right, that would help. <laughs> Hi, Solomon. Yes, sir. Um, what you're offering, of course, is knowledge, and we're grateful for that. I just want to give a little trend out context. You're not the first person mm. to tell us this. Granted, it's a, a different context than it was 10 years ago in terms of the industry. But there's something I've always been asking, that to fill that gap between knowledge and doing, do you, do you understand what motivates a person to get the job done? You talk about incorporation, you know, registering trademarks. People say, yeah, 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 and then nothing gets done. How do you motivate, if you do have to do that at all, for persons to actually get the business done, as opposed to just knowing it? Well, I have a whip. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, look, it's, it's, it's tough, you know? I mean, look, I, I'm not, I, I work as, I've worked as talent management. I've worked, mm -hmm. you know. For me, I'm, it's tough love with me, like, as, as, a, as a talent manager. And I don't work with anybody. As it who, should be. I don't look at anybody who doesn't have the motivation, first of all. Mm -hmm. But I think platforms like this, um, maybe you can inspire through case studies. You can sort of, like you said, it's, it's an ongoing problem everywhere, right? So it's not, I mean, even with all the examples in the states of artists being ripped off since the Motown days, people are still getting ripped off today, right? So it's fine. Um, the truth is everybody, I think, can be a superstar, but, but you start to filter. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, you start to filter what makes a lot of artists what they are, what they become, and a lot of it is just not wanting to show up for stuff like this and understand the business. So, I don't know if that motivates anybody. I think, you know, we'll find the one or two people, right, that maybe will 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 get inspired and do, and maybe they will also start to carry other people along in the community, and, and maybe we'll change the dynamic one step at a time. And I think um, that's, that's just what I think. So let me help them, motiv motivate them to talk, <laughs> right? Because I tell them I wasn't reading the bio, but I'll pull out snippets of it. So he has also worked as the executive advisor to Miss Lauren Hill. He's worked with international acts like Cardi B, Kelly Rowland, Rick Ross on live performances, as well as A-list African music artists on the global music licensing and publishing scene. So, nobody have a second question? Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, good day. Greetings. Hi. Um, I heard you um, make mention of collaborating with um, artists, whether it's 20 or 50. And um, other than just reaching out to them, hoping that they respond, I know a lot of artists are hungry, as in they don't really, they want to, but they don't have the funds financially to actually reach that. How can they now, I know with the smaller artists they will get it, but if like, let's say they want to get like a mid-level to actually get uh, uh, at least a, a, a foot in, how can they reach without like not having the funds? Because I know most artists will ask for a little cash for a feature or something like that. So apart from the 50, if you're just trying to get one or two, how can they reach out? Well, it's a, it's, it's a really good question. I think um, it doesn't have to involve, an ex collaborations like this don't have, to, don't have to involve an exchange of funds. It's an exchange of value, right? So I think as an artist, uh, whether you're a producer or you know, songwriter or a you know, performing artist, you know, you have something to bring to the table. And that is what you're basically exchanging, is value for value, right? You come from this great region in the Caribbean. If you collaborate with me, you know, we're going to open up doors for you in this market. And that's what the artists are thinking when they think about collaborating with a musician in another territory. It gives them the opportunity to also expand their reach, right? I mean, something I did mention as well is definitely there are there are ways for you to sort of build your own equity, right? So as an independent artist, I mean, you get on TikTok. I've seen artists come not spending any money, right? Organic growth and getting to the point I've seen it live and, you know, in a, in a couple of years becoming um, a case in point is Remma. I mean, he, he did a, he did a um, cover 
of a song by the prince, right? He was a boy from Benin. The prince saw that and signed it. You know, so I'm just saying that was a signing, but it's a collaboration, right? So you have to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. You have to work. Any more questions? 100 bucks a question, US dollars. I'll give you 100 bucks for the, for the next few questions. <laughs> Incentives? Hey. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, before you go, uh, <laughs> let me ask this. Um, one of the challenges, you talk about this region, and one of the challenges, obviously, is we don't have the numbers in terms of, let's say, a Nigeria or South Africa. We don't have those kinds of numbers within the Caribbean to really sell that. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You know, so what else can we offer other than, I mean, we can offer the sun, um, sand and beaches and that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, we had to have some other value because as you said before, they're looking at the numbers. We don't have them kind of numbers. How, what can we do? I mean, we have to get credit right now in Trinidad, for example, to the Zest movement was, they have been able to, so um, overcome that challenge, some of them, and they have been getting numbers. But um, the average Trinidadian artist unable to, or Caribbean artist, what can you offer as, an adv as advice to take us to that place? Wow. <laughs> well, first of all, in terms of numbers, I mean, I don't think I think in the region, that is, Trinidad itself might be a you know, pretty you know, small country. Yeah. I think in the region, maybe there's, I don't know, 30, 40 million in the, across the Caribbean. 45. I don't know. How many? 45 million, okay. right? 45 million. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Across four languages. Yeah, across four languages. No, that's fine. Yeah. But, but I think that's, that's not a bad, mm -hmm. that's good. I know that artists from my zone, Afrobeats, they're really trying to get into this region. But outside of the numbers, right, outside of the numbers, what you have is yourself, right? What you have is the vibes, right? Is, you know, when you go back, I mean, I've known about soca music from, from way back. Somehow, without the internet, it traveled to where I was in Nigeria, <laughs> right? Um, and it's based upon the vibes, right? You see commercials from the 80s, right? Before my time. We see commercials from the 80s where there's like Caribbean music playing, um, specifically Soka Calypso, international um, commercials, mm -hmm. film placements. Like I think that you gave some examples or, you gave some examples? The minister. minister the Honorable yeah. Minister gave some examples. So it's already happened. I think Shane said it the best. He said you are a market leader, yeah. right? So one thing that we do in Nigeria is we believe we're just the best, okay? <laughs> so, it, so it's not even, you know? <laughs> no, but we just... We have nothing, you know, we, we, we may come from the, 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 the most, you know, poor place in, 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 in the country, but we walk with our chests up, uh -huh. and I think it's important for us to understand our value when it comes to um, this particular market, and I think that, that might answer the question. We need to sell our value and understand that value. That's, that's really the best you can do. Um. Send me your invoice for the 100. Um. <laughs> I didn't specify US, did I? OK, OK, OK. <laughs> Inv invoices, please. It takes about 75 days to pay. But I didn't specify payment terms. OK. Is the mic on? But OK. Yeah. Go. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a comment and a question, um, because you were speaking a lot about artists investments and I think most of us don't make that investment um, but it also boils down to financial literacy mm. Mm. and I think it's something that we should all kind of focus on because it's been a thing in Trinidad and Tobago for artists to have a job and then also pursue right. the, the, the work that they do mm -hmm. um, but I think 
if you are fortunate enough to just pursue your arts, then the understanding that, okay, well, there isn't a salary coming into my account. What do I do to make myself more of a business, as you were saying? Mm -hmm. And like a simple thing, like every time you get gig money, putting the entire thing into a bank account mm -hmm. and then drawing it, as opposed to, oh, well, I have this bill to pay, cash That's out of pocket. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of those things, resources sometimes are given and then it's just there and we don't go for it. So in terms of trying to, I think what I'm really trying to get from you is how do we incentivize ourselves to really make that personal in investment because knowledge is only worthwhile if it's used. Right, so a lot of the things that are going to happen over these next couple of days are going to be of high value, but if we don't find a way to really, yeah, like make a plan to use it. So, yeah, so like I said, it's kind of a comment and a bit of a question, but I don't know if it's actually a question. I'm usually very... No, but, you, but, you, but you've raised a good point, though. Yeah. As financial literacy is also the foundation of, of knowledge. You have to understand um, you know, how to manage your finances and know where you are, right? So if right now you're an artist that is not making money from shows, you've recorded like a, a hundred songs in your room or your studio, but nobody knows who you are, I mean, it's kind of tough, right, to make a living. You know, you're gonna have to maybe get a job and work. And then that is part of investing in yourself. So you take, you have a job you're making $1,000 a month, you take 100 bucks and you invest in promoting yourself on TikTok, right? The, the bottom line is, I think what we're discussing and what you're, you're describing is, you know, do, do you have the attitude Mm -hmm. You know, do you have the right attitude? So I think maybe the focus of, mm -hmm. of this particular conversation and the take home is if you're an artist, ask yourself, right, am I doing enough? And it's not just the artists that are established, oh, sorry, uh, um, you know, sort of underground artists mm -hmm. or, or artists that are on a certain level, it's across the board, right? So that's, I think, the take home for me if I'm sitting in the chair right now is asking myself, is this something that I really want to do? Right? Mm -hmm. Do I want to get a nine to five and stick to that? You know, there, there are about, I don't know how many millions of songs, I don't have the data, but millions of songs are uploaded to Spotify on a monthly basis, right? There's hundreds of thousands of artists. There's AI that's making songs. So you're competing with, with all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. If that's not motivation enough to understand that, look, if I'm going to yeah. eat, you know, off of this, my passion, um, then maybe you just get a different, I, yeah, I, I will take, the, take the security of a job. <laughs> Or the other thing is, I think it was mentioned earlier, like for me, I was an artist. I don't know how, I, I think I was reasonably, reasonably good. But I realized, I hope, I was. I mean, my, my, my friend said I was good. But I, but, I, but, I decided, but I decided, but I decided early on, right, that this was not for me, right? I decided in my, like I was maybe 21, but I decided, you know what, I, I wanna, you know, and it was basically because I saw how my manager was trying to shaft me, you know. Big ups to him wherever he is now. But, you know, I, I realized that now, this is not for me. Let me focus on the business. And since then, so there's other things you can do in music, right? I think it's important to look at your passion, look at your circumstances. You know, artists can start off doing live events and promoting club gigs, right? Um, you can start off as a DJ maybe, because maybe that's more a way to get money. You can write songs for other people, right? So you can still find careers in music while you're, you can work in the studio, learn how to engineer. So the, the, and all these things have happened in real life. Engineers have become big artists, um, um, interns have become P. Diddy, you know? So there's, there's always, here's an intern, right? So there's always ways and means, right? So I'll just say, get out there and hustle. Yeah, and to add to what he was saying, so one of my short spiels to people, to your question of motivation, as you say, you have to be able to motivate yourself or find a mentor or something, but you still True. can't rely on the mentor to motivate you all the time, right? It has to be your passion. If you say you want this, you have to understand you decide to enter a crazy field. <laughs> and it's either you want it or you don't want it. And I'm pretty sure Femi may nod to this, but we have the actors and the actresses. They have um, 
audition, after audition, hmm. after audition. After, they have a hundred no's before they get that right. one yes. We have our spotlight program for Music TT, and every year people come, they audition. One year they didn't get through. Uh, them don't want me, I don't want to come back to this. It's like, all right, well then it's not for you because you're not hungry enough you're and hungry you don't enough. want to thing up. So you have to find a way to motivate yourself. You will have your down period, take your down time and be like, all right, but don't stay there. Stay in there is the problem. Stay in there. So, yeah. um, yeah. One comment, though. Thank Very you. quickly, Roger. On that. Um, yeah. Let's not forget that your product is most important. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how much confidence, mm -hmm. no, mat no ma matter how motivated <laughs> you are, if you do not have a good product to sell me, I'm not interested. Thank you. We actually did have that in our discussion about quality control. <laughs> but yeah, you can't. You have to revert to that. If your stuff is not working, maybe it's not the hustle. Maybe you just need it. Maybe you just need another. another yeah, answer. get a day job. Um, Rua. One more question. Before it gets carried away. Um, so we have some well, very uh, prominent <laughs> persons within the room here. Thanks again for coming. Do you, you, it's a two-part two question, do you still, um, are you closely in touch with some of these producer artists that you um, work with currently? You want the numbers? <laughs> yes, that would be, that's the second part of the question. The reason is, um, that's, talk, that, that's initiative, okay, so I, lo I love it. So, so that would be the second part of the question. Yeah. Of course, I'll probably approach you directly and kind of get those contacts because that is what this is about. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I'm there now, so. I wanted to ask that question. All right, so my lady here will be the last question. And then um, just a little change of plans. Our guy had to run across the Kaiser Blues, by the way, which is having our showcase at 8 p.m. tonight. So I want to see faces there. Um, so we're just going to do an open networking, right? Please do not monopolize any one person's time. You know, be mindful of everyone else just for today. Tomorrow we will go back to the structure that was advised on. So yes, my lady. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Solomon, you talked about making yourself as an artist more attractive, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think it is more profitable slash valuable or whatever word you want to use to do what is popular, what is accepted by the masses mostly? Do you think that's a fair or profitable trade to make? than what you enjoy and what you feel most naturally good at. Because I am one half of a duo, Echo, and we like really singy songs and harmonies and sweet music, but we've learned that the average Trini Joe like rhythm and vibes and thing. And we try to include some of that, but we focus more on what we like, and we've been trying to um, find a balance between the two, which has been extremely difficult, but we move and we keep working. But do you think that is an important factor to make yourself more attractive, finding a balance between what the people like, which may not be what you love, and what you like, or just stick to what you just do? Keep going, keep going, keep, keep going, and you'll make it. What do you suggest? Wow. I know I said I'll pay you, but I think you need to pay me for this one. This is, <laughs> this is a loaded consultation. But, but yeah, I mean, um, definitely it's key to, you know, to find your voice, right? To find, what, to find your unique proposition. So part of building a business or building a product is having a USP, mm -hmm. your unique selling point. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that unique selling point might stray away from what the, the market might be saying. But guess what, right? Um, one of the biggest songs in the world right now, I think, is a song by Libyanka called People. Mm -hmm. And I think Libyanka, yeah. we're doing some stuff with her. She's an example of just, you know, Afrobeats is a certain vibe, a certain kind of thing. She took it to another place, and still the song, you just, you know, I was talking to a label, and they said, you know what? That's Sony. Her song is number one in India from the moment it came out, and we don't understand why. I mean, they didn't market in India. So I think with the world being sort of one market, right, you can find your, 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 your listeners. You can find it. If it's not in Trinidad, guess what? Then your listeners will be in India, or they'll be in South Africa or London, right? So don't, don't sell yourself short on what you do if you do it well. Um, like my man said, develop your product to the highest level. And trust me, 
you find, well, I can't make any guarantees. That's yeah. just, but you know, with work, with faith, and all of that good stuff, you'll find your audience. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. All I realize is only after I read the bio, all the questions come, right? What's that? You realize after I read the bio, all the questions come, right? Hey, man, you got to sell yourself. I guess I wouldn't hmm. sell, we didn't sell it. Hmm. He, the 100 US dollars motivation. Send your, your invoices, send your invoices. Right. Remember, he says 75 days to clear, right? Yeah. He didn't say if it's working Working days. or working days. <laughs> <laughs> You have to read the fine print, you know? <laughs> and it's a contract you sign, but you know. <laughs> so thank you so much, Solomon, for you. imparting your knowledge and, thank, and chatting. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to also, <laughs> I look forward to, to learning from everyone. I mean, this is not supposed to be a one, you know? Correct. Like, we're not trying to teach anybody anything, per se. We want to share. So feel free to engage us as well. Correct. Thank you. So.